Files is brought to you by EXO Auto Works. EXO Auto Works is Colorado Springs' home of the $40 synthetic blend oil change. Call now, 719-375-3232, or visit exoautoworks.com to make your appointment. Enharmonic Studios. Enharmonic Studios is a hybrid digital analog facility designed to be quality and affordable to anyone who wants to make history. Call today, 719-963-2020, or go to facebook.com slash enharmonicstudios. Trevor's Beard is brought to you by The Beard Struggle. The Beard Struggle is my go-to for beard hygiene and styling products, so you should click the link below and use the code TLANE15, that's TLANE15, for 15% off your order. The Toolbar, our new line of handmade soap produced in partnership with Crafts by Carolyn Lane, available on Etsy. This soap packs a punch of manly scent, like oak and fig, fresh cut lumber, cedar, and more masculine fragrances being developed all the time. With the soft touch of natural oils to cleanse and moisturize, use the link below to buy the tool bar now. Once you try it, you'll never want to wash with anything else. Imagine. From EXO Auto Works. Streaming all over the world. It's your weekly dose of toxic masculinity. With Eric Madrid. Because if too many people are just running around with their dicks out, it's called the Harambe variant. And Trevor Lane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> of Karen. <laughs> it's mad. It's mad. What is up? Everybody out there in uh, Radio Land, Podcast Land, <laughs> driving your car back from your shitty job land, listening to Podcast Land, somewhere. That's it. That's it. Shitty job land. Shitty job land. <laughs> Welcome. It's another Thursday night. Your thrills and spills. Uh, it's going to be a very dynamic and uh, um, interesting episode. Should be. Should be. They usually are. Or not. So, <laughs> that's Trevor. I'm Eric. Apparently, uh, we don't say that enough. We, we get comments <laughs> on, on that, that we don't identify each other or ourselves. Um, not that it's not on the screen. Good job, Trevor. Thank you. I really like that new one. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice and clean. The The amount of work that you put into this thing is ridiculous. You should be working <laughs> you know, for uh, uh, CNN or... And MSNBC, one of those people that have legitimate, you know, broadcast stations, because this thing looks amazing, and then you hear us speak, and it just and goes yeah. downhill. Yeah. And you realize that we're very unintelligent and yes. have no business talking about anything to anybody. That's right. Yeah. Uh, which brings us to our disclaimer: Man Tools Media should not be listened to by anyone ever, and the advice and uh, subject matter given on this podcast should be taken with total tongue in cheek. There you go. That's a good one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh man well let's get to it how was your week uh not bad we've uh we've got the uh most of the baby rats adopted out <laughs> so i'm happy about that they're uh Again. they're going to spend the weekend at the rescue the ones and she's going to keep the ones that have been spoken for and then the ones that uh have not i guess she's going to some adoption fair and going to try to get rid of the rest so I said, you know, your shitty neighbor three doors up. Just <laughs> let him go in his backyard. Everything will be fine. Work itself out. Uh, no. Circle of life. No. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Gross. Um, speaking of rats, I finally watched Judge Dredd for the first time ever. Yeah. I did not watch the it. Rat Burger. The Rat Burger. Uh huh. Yeah. That's what brought it to mind. No, not Judge Dredd. Um, Demolition. No, man. that's the that's Demolition the other one man. I've never watched. Yeah. I, uh, never. I never really watched Stallone films when I was young because I watched Over the Top and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. It's a great movie. Sure. Uh, I also watched, and I love, Oscar. It's a play about a gangster trying to go straight during Prohibition era. Okay. Like With Stallone? Yeah. Okay. Totally not Stallone-esque. Like, it's great. 
So the journey goes straight. Yeah, yeah. none of that. <laughs> There's a little bit of it to caricature the mob the Italian mob boss that's happening, but okay. it's full of actors who became super famous. After, oh, okay. After that, All Tim right. Curry. Um, fuck. Wow, Tim the Curry guy and from Sly in a movie together. It was great. Wow, it was okay. amazing. Um, yeah, there was just a bunch of people that became famous in gangster movies that got lead roles in gay. Red Foreman was in it. He's great. Yeah, I don't even okay. know his real name. All right, it's just Red Foreman. Uh, what's up, Keys? Uh, our Sacramento chapter just logged on. I want to say what's up to Keys out there. Hopefully, you're doing well. It's been weeks. She's probably running around like crazy person now. And then I'll tell you what. <laughs> man tools rule number something or other I, got, I don't have memory if you're going to audition a new guy you might want to be ready to and have beer talking in a band uh, I don't care what you're doing if it's at work or the band situation okay. yeah. mine particularly was this week last night the band situation I've been working on tile flooring all well for like a week so I've like no motor skills right now. <laughs> when we go to play, he's he's ready to play all the hard songs, like yeah. the cool stuff with big chords. And I'm like, oh, and he's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> sounded better on the demo, you sounded, guys. Sent me. <laughs> you guys sounded way better on YouTube. Uh, your videos are you guys lip syncing? Because oh, it was yeah. I felt like such a turd. Go to play. He's like, yeah, all right. Well, you get the solo on this one. I'm like, all right, man, that's cool. And. uh I go for it. It's like near, 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 near. It's all my hands can do. In my mind, I'm sending signals for my brain to go. It's near, 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 near. Hands like nope. Sends a signal back. I can't do it. So be ready. I don't care what I don't care what it is. Job or whatever. Just if you're gonna audition somebody, you might want to have your poop in group too. Cause that's yeah, that's good advice. It's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. Right. On with the show. Yeah, let's. I think we should bring in our guest. Absolutely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this evening we are happy to have with us uh, Mr. Nathan Bennett. He uh, hosts a podcast called Chinese Revolutions that covers uh, some Chinese history. Um, and I'll let him, cause he'll do a better job of it, kind of explain, uh, what he does over there. Uh, let me get that <laughs> keys. Your face fell off. Yes, it did. Your face fell off. Uh, let me get his microphone turned on and, um, we'll bring him in. All right, Nathan, how you doing? We're on. We are here. I think. Hang on. <laughs> He's like, I think. Do we have the volumes? I didn't, I didn't see him popping up. Oh, I did the same thing I did last week. I changed our microphone instead of the speaker. Oh, that's funny. There so remember when I said earlier, Nathan, about how much Trevor does for the show and how awesome he is? <laughs> still, Take all of that back. Still holds true. <laughs> I could All right, play. try that again. Can you can you hear us? I, I know that uh, technical issues are fickle beasties. All right, well we got you coming through now. So you're getting good and loud. Why don't Keep, you tell us a little bit about your uh, your show there? Well, I lived in China for seven years, not consecutively, but I. That's about what it adds up to, and. When you're in China, there's all this stuff that you can't quite say because you don't know what kind of trouble you might get in. Um, oh, so I'm kind I'm... of getting China out of my system by doing a podcast about Chinese history, starting from the Opium War, going to the present, looking at revolutionary movements. Okay, so what? So let's say American reference, right? Because we're stuck on our own calendar. Yeah. What part of history were the Opium Wars? The opi uh, the first one was, um, okay, like what was going on in 1840? 
uh, you're looking at the like a, a lot of the stuff in your history book where it's like they're figuring out what's going to be a free state, what's going to be a slave state. Um, America is settling the Louisiana Purchase. Um, ah, that's the Mexican-American War. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Is uh, around that time. So, Alamo is a bit before that. The it's Texas the but... War was happening or getting rolling. The Napoleonic Wars ended 1815 uh, with with Napoleon's final defeat at Waterloo. Um, so then the Louisiana, oh, the Louisiana Purchase had happened and we're out discovering. So Manifest Destiny, that's yeah. about where we're at, right? 1840? Yeah, Wild West before yeah, you they got, had six shooters. You got yep. the big gold rush in California in the 1830s. 1830s, yep. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Now I'm on, I'm on point. Sorry to have to reference from my own myopic, you know, <laughs> world that's, view. That's actually something I try to do in my podcast because it's, it, it's like, like China is its own reference point. Right, yeah. Like, like, like when, when the British roll up with a battle fleet asking just what is going on with uh, destroying all the opium, um, that's, that's, that's its own thing in Chinese history. Whereas for us, it's just, yeah, this thing happened. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I get you. <clears throat> right. Well, and that's th that happens everywhere. Um, <clears throat> you, you have to pivot from your own. For, you know, from your own little microcosm. Like if you ask the British about the Revolutionary War, they're like, what? <laughs> no, that was the. <laughs> Well, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. What's well, a revolutionary war? No, no, no. It's when you <laughs> bastards. You mean that little skirmish where we let you be your own let country? You your own country? <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so I, it, from what I understand from kind of reading on your website and um, listening to at least portions of a few episodes, um, it, it sounds like you're more or less going in kind of a chronological order. Uh, is that fair to fair to say? Yeah, partly it's I'm trying to understand China. Um, I, I have some very, very big notions that I think are largely right. Uh, but like I'm trying to understand what's going on today and like the the people you've heard of, people like Chiang Kai Shek, Chairman Mao, um, Sun Yat Sen, going back a little further, um, even for them, the the models, the heroes that they're following, are historically just around the corner, but we don't know anything about any of that. Um, like for us, okay, like something like the Taiping Rebellion, which is something that's coming up. Yeah, tens of millions have died. No, tens of millions of people died um, in this Chinese civil war. And we have no idea what significance that has. It's just this weird fact that we might get, you know, on you know, wars with the highest body count lists. Um, it's... Uh, like like the the end of you know Chinese dynasties, you know was that because that you know you know screw monarchy, therefore it's out, or was there something else? Well, there was something else, um, like the Han Chinese taking back over after there had been a foreign dynasty for two hundred or so years. That even understanding the Communist Party of China, it's just like. So, so I, I'm, so I, I'm basically getting China out of my system by going deeper into the history and digging it up and seeing what's there. And probably talking about events or at least talking about events in a way that certainly when you lived there, um, you weren't necessarily free to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have a question something that I find that happens in even in, in short term histories about it repeating itself yeah let's just say like well the music scene in Colorado Springs okay something near and dear to my heart watching the same mistakes and the same shit happen over and over at different 
places. It's like they're make. It's like nobody learns from the past, or they do, or I don't know. I'm not quite putting a finger on it. But are you finding that in your diving into the depths of the history of that, you know, country, that you're seeing some, you know, repeated themes or tropes that keep happening over and over again? Um, history repeating itself is, uh, like, like one of the, uh, like, like, if, like, there's, there's a level of history where it's like, okay, this is what you teach to like high school students to get the, the general idea. And then there's, you start digging into it and you completely lose your way. And then you kind of come back to, Ah, uh, yeah. So there, there, like, like the stuff I learned in high school wasn't like totally off. It's just there's a whole lot more stuff. Like, like, like if you have, um, like if you're looking at mountains through dense clouds, okay, like you'll see the the major peaks coming through. But then as the fog clears, as the clouds lift, you start to see more of the mountains. You see more peaks emerging. All of the peaks you could see before are still there, but now you're seeing all of the mountains and valleys and slopes and forests covering them and all that. Um, with uh, the the uh, so the part of history that is most close to our awareness is close to other periods in Chinese history where the uh, ruling dynasty was down for the count and they needed a new one to be installed. And that could be a period of like 50 to 100 years. Um, so like China being a strong, powerful, unified country, not having uh, like, like one of the reasons why America was able to be in China during World War II is they let us in. We were helping them fight their war. They let us in. That. That so so the 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 parts that we know about as Americans, where we were able to engage deeply with Chinese society through missionaries, through development work, through um, sending military supplies, that was a something that happens in Chinese history, but it is by no means the regular thing. Gotcha. So you like in this in people say, well, we've never had this happen before. You know, President Trump did this or did that. I was like this is very, smacks very much of McKinley's administration. Like all the they stole the election or they did this or there was there was a lot of that stuff happening there too. And then this Biden thing, this has never happened before. And I'm like, um, I read you know, twenty seventh president Chester A. Arthur had the same <laughs> shit going on like. It it just it permeates itself, and I, I guess I think of, um, and I shouldn't because you you made you made something kind of interesting switch my brain a little bit. I always think of it as a you know a geopolitical place, and then not so much like I don't know, like there's people, and there you know there's farmers and there's businessmen and there's. You know what I mean? I, I tend to think yeah. of, I tend to think of things on a broader scope, and I miss sort of the brush strokes, and that's that's interesting. Like you're saying, there's people. So when you said there's like fifty or a hundred years without like a, a an instantiated sort of what we would consider a monarchy, but theirs is a dynasty, which is ishly similar. Well, it, like you know, like like a a dynasty is just the the father to son mm -hmm. um handoff of power and then like when, when the the family just completely runs out of juice you you know like some upstart general or uh in the case of the qing dynasty or the yuan dynasty foreigners came in and um you know wiped out the existing rule, rulers and they started their own thing according to the pattern of chinese imperial rule um but then in uh, as you like as you as you uh, described like, like uh, bringing up yeah I, I'm a little fuzzy on on some of the finer points of American history have been abroad so long um, I'm 
not there anymore. But anyway, the um, it's that the 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 things that repeat. It's it's like what what has been will be again. It's just you you have to know what you're looking for to find that. Well, it boils down to you know people are people. Doesn't matter what yes. bolt of cloth you're cut from, or what street you live on, what oceans on the left and what oceans on the right. It doesn't matter. We're gonna do the same shit every you know over and over again. We have the same exactly. worries. We have the same goals. We have the same aspirations. We're people. You know, if you're a, a, a tech worker, you know, in China in the sock factory, like we've talked about here. You, you still want to like hang out with your buds you still have uh, you know leanings on religion and politics and policy you have your own moral fiber and you fight for what's right that you believe is right and versus you know your uh, uh, oil rigger in South Texas it's the same guy it's the same exact yep. guy every time yep. don't care where you are um, you know if you're at a, in a maple factory in Canada <laughs> 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 we're just we pick on Canada because yeah they're the Gretzky <laughs> nappers we're, we're the Gretzky nappers that's what we are we just mess with Canada because it's funny oh yeah well their only export is great rock and roll so yeah yeah Rush Triumph Big Rack yep we'll avoid the other we'll avoid the other one Nickelback oh Jesus <laughs> I didn't even realize they were Canadian <clears throat> or I'd forgotten until you said so. <laughs> that's funny. Um, that's, that's bizarre. So, all right. Question. Were you there when um, the whole Hong Kong um, thing happened? Yeah. When? Okay. Give me an exact date. Oh, I'm trying to no, think. no, no. Like a year. Give me a year. What was that? Are you talking about the hand back? The hand back in the... Sometime in the nineties, but I don't remember exactly. 90s. <clears throat> oh no! College. I, I I visit I visited Hong Kong, I believe it was twice when I was there for this last five year block, um, but I wasn't there after Beijing really started tightening the screws. So when um, when you visited, it was more autonomous than it appears to be now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's bizarre. Yeah, I was recently watching, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the economist Milton Friedman. Um, years and years and years and years ago, he did a um, a series on uh, PBS named after his book called Free to Choose. And he's, uh, I'd call him basically kind of, kind of the, he's typically the economist that most people who get into like libertarian thinking are introduced to first. Mm -hmm. um, so the first episode of the series is about, uh, he talks about how you can see a contrast between right, right next to each other, between where the government pretty much stays out of everything and where the government has its hands in everything, in, everything. Uh, in the way that at that time, Hong Kong was existing as a British colony <clears throat> right next to China and the way the Brits ran Hong Kong though was pretty hands off like do whatever you want just don't get in any wars you know <laughs> it's kind of there <laughs> um, so I'm curious on a kind of a scale of that level of, of, of kind of autonomy and freedom to now where obviously China is just like no Hong Kong is just part of China and it's going to be treated like part of China um, kind of how how hands off were the Chinese with Hong Kong when you were there? Um, part of um, like so even uh, even after 1949, uh, Hong Kong was the was a portal through which China interacted with the non communist world. Um, it's like it's it's stock market. I remember hearing on a podcast. Um, like if you if you want to learn certain thing like um 
like to list on the Chinese on the Hong Kong stock market, you have to submit all your stuff in Chinese and in English. So if you want, you know, high quality, you know, parallel translations in corporate language, you go to the the listings in Hong Kong. Um, it's the it's a way that a lot of foreign money got to China for investment. It it's done according to European and American standards, um, whereas China is still figuring out a lot of standards. Like like part of why the 2008 financial crisis didn't happen so much to China was because their financial system was not that advanced to screw up that badly. Um, they have their own ways of screwing up, but it's the... the so like, like Hong Kong is is very much um, a, a portal for China to access the rest of the world um, where they're like, but it, it's also a base where activists, um, you know, like, like activists stay there because the law is different and they like foreigners can use that to get into China or um like uh, a lot of religious workers will be based in Hong Kong. So where like where China was really uh, bringing down the hammer is on integrating Hong Kong law with the law of the mainland. So like you, you can't just be criticizing Beijing all the time because my goodness, who knows what might happen? Somebody might think that Xi Jinping has a funny haircut or something. Oh, so yeah, I get it. You're, <clears throat> the portal thing that's interesting the buffer zone it's like here this is where we play nice um you know here in this zone you know, look this is the, the way everybody looks through that's a great way to put it and then there's the rest of china yeah yeah that's interesting that's really interesting really well the the yeah i was gonna say i mean i, I would not want new york to be that you know what I'm saying? Like, but oh, it, here's New York. But it kind of is. Kinda, I know. It kind of <laughs> is. It's like New York, New York. Is this where everybody, this is where da da da, or, you know, LA. Um, it's, it's interesting because it's not a, 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 a sample of the entire country. It's the portal. New York is that what people think of, oh, America, they think Manhattan. You know? Yeah. That's that's very interesting. That's a cool. So I'm gonna be thinking about that for a few days. I think CSI New York is like how we live our lives. Everybody <laughs> lives in apartments and drives. It only takes you 16 minutes to get from one side of the town to the other. Like no. <laughs> that's my only problem with that show 24 with uh, Jack Bauer. Trust me, I'm Jack Bauer. That show. Loved it because of the whole thing. Except they can get across LA in like six minutes. Yeah. No. So Michael, <laughs> Michael, our uh, our landlord, our landlord, <laughs> boss man, uh, asks in the chat: Isn't the U.S. dollar basically the main currency for the world, even though there are other currencies? And I'll kind of answer that. Um, the I, I'm not like I, I don't I'm not hearing the microphone. F uh, from is it Eric? From me? I, I'm not hearing this one. No, no, yours is fine. Oh, mine? You can't hear mine. That's fine. Weird. That's strange. Come on, Trevor. Anyway, uh, Michael. Trevor, Michael yeah. is asking this. He says, "Isn't the U.S. dollar basically the main currency for the world, even though there are other currencies?" Yeah, it is. It is a substantial. Um, reserve currency yes um what i like this is something i just learned a few days ago uh like with the with the uh russian invasion of ukraine yes it's a war not a special operation um like a special operation is if ukraine had a hernia or something um the uh like like nixon um was it nixon pushed the Middle Eastern countries in exchange for uh, American military protection, they uh, insist that oil be sold in dollars. Yeah. 
so then this backs up the so so getting off the gold standard um having like the exchange of the 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 exchange for oil be in dollars that allows for the expansion of the exi- that, that 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 allows for more dollars to exist and for them to be valuable um so like like because of like belief in the american economy then holding an american dollar means something for the rest of the world um so like it, it it's based on a variety of things to get it off you know you know one dollar for one gold dollar exact matching um so I, I learned about the petrodollar a few days ago yeah we kind of swapped gold for oil <clears throat> and then uh, recently russia has said anyone that's kind of hostile to them or that is doing sanctions, they're going to require rubles in exchange for their. So now if you want to trade with Russia for oil and they're a huge oil (laughs) producer, um, if you're engaging in sanctions against them, you'll have to convert your dollars to rubles where it used to be converted to dollars. Yeah. Uh, You'll have to convert your currency to rubles and then buy your oil from them. And on the world stage right now, the ruble is what, like three cents? It's It's been oh. worthless for decades. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah. It's all tied to oil, <clears throat> right? You need to scrape that shit off the floor, Michael, and just resell it. That's what you got to do down here at the shop. Don't put the kitty litter on it. Just scrape it up and resell it. It's worth It's black gold. <laughs> Texas tea. What else do they call oil? Um, I think those are the only I two I, I know I think of. I landed on yeah. it. There you go. <clears throat> Interesting. All right. So, like, which um, – they're not states. What are they called? Provinces in China? Right? Yes. So, which ones have you visited? Okay. Um, okay. L- l- let me see if I can – Okay, so I I lived in Beijing for seven years. Um, I've been to Sichuan. Uh, There's Chengdu. I've also been in some of the mountainous areas of Sichuan. I've been to Yunnan, uh, which is in the southwest. Uh, I've been to Guangxi. Um, I've also been to Guizhou. Like so, so a lot of southwestern China, not Tibet. Um, I've been to Shanxi, which is um, it's east of where the terracotta warriors are. Um, I've been in the Chinese Northeast, um, some two or three provinces up there. Like wh- when I was teaching English at a Chinese university, I was sitting alone in my room staring at the wall, and I thought I could be looking at other walls. And so I just started booking tickets online to go to Northeast China. And I'm glad I did, because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten that part of the country. Um, I, I didn't, there, there's a lot of the, I, I've been to Wuhan, and uh, I was actually in the province where Wuhan is as the pandemic was breaking out, but I was on the other end of Wuhan, of, of that province uh, for work. You, um, this was all your fault. This is you. <laughs> you came back to the Merca. A joke. Yeah, pretty a much. Joke. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, the um, we've actually got a map up as well. Good job, Trevor. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, the so if you look in the middle bottom there, Sichuan, Guizhou, Guangxi, Yunnan. I've been there. I've been to Hubei, which is the orange right there in the heart. Um, I've been to Hubei twice. Once to go to Wuhan to. Uh, see Wuhan and then work sent me out west uh, at the beginning of 2020 like I got back from a trip to Romania um, and you know work says yeah you're you're going to Wuhan next you're going to Hun- oh, God, what is it? Hubei you're going to Hubei next week great thanks <laughs> um, I've been to Shandong uh, which is the penin- the blue peninsula sticking out um on the east side there, I've been to Liaoning, I've been to Heilongjiang, I think I've been to Be- to Jilin. 
I've also been to Xinjiang, which is up there in the northwest. Um, that like like I've 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 gone to Xinjiang. I've uh, gotten as far west as the part of China that's fifty miles from Afghanistan. Um, so I there's but there there's a lot of Chinese heartland that I didn't get to. Um, I've been to Shanghai though. Well, you just, you got to you have to. Yeah, that's fun. That's uh, the travel part. You know, yeah. looking at walls is is not. I don't know. It's not my nature. Cubicle job, that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, I kind of want to go do stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, get out and see everything. I mean, why not, right? I mean, my. <clears throat> oh, not, I'm not gonna lie. One of my favorite. Sh- television shows was the was it no no boundaries or no reservations anthony bourdain he just went everywhere it's like all right i'm a famous chef i want to travel the world all right we're gonna make a tv show where i get to go places and eat cool food like and talk to everybody just wherever that to me is the most amazing yeah because that you that's the best part you just show up be like hey you know let's have some dinner there's a certain style of documentary filmmaking where it's it's some guy walking around, but he might be walking around where the things happened. He might use something from modern life as a stand-in for something he's talking about, about something in the past, uh, like a by, like a documentary about the life of Michael Collins, one of, one of the key people to getting Ireland independent of British rule. Uh, like he used a modern meeting of the Irish Association in London as a stand-in for some meeting that Michael Collins burst in on when he was working in London. Um, the, yeah, there, there's like, like just walking around and showing things. It's a, it, it's, it's a really absorbing um, style. And it, it's just, it's a little more real than like, like just showing slides or something. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. It puts you, it, uh, it's, it's called captive ownership is the sales term, where it puts you in that future tense of being there or, you, you you know, you're invested. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. I would love to go to China. I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. World War III is right around the corner. We're all getting drafted. <laughs> see you boys on the front lines. <laughs> Well, if you ever go to Beijing, if you're if you're there for two days, don't bother with the Great Wall. If you're there for three days, maybe you can make one of those days a visit to the Great Wall. Right. Gotcha. It just takes so damn long to get there. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. I would imagine. It's, it's stairs. It's nothing but stairs. <laughs> it's just, it's the oh, Stairmaster no. <laughs> 1, not 4,000. You don't get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the original Stairmaster. Uh, <clears throat> oh, but oh, you can see it from space. That's the only man-made object you can see from space. I legitimately had a TikToker like in the little feeds in your shorts. Give us that wives' tale. Only like, you'd see a lot of man-made shit from space, bud. <laughs> like <laughs> Earth is flat. You can see all of it, <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> uh, the misinformation. <clears throat> It's so funny. There was a great line I heard uh, when I was up near the Great Wall for a retreat for some company I was teaching for. They said somebody said, "You know, you can see the moon from the Great Wall." Said, <laughs> <laughs> <"So>, "Can you?" <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I uh, I would guess when conditions are right, you can see the sun as well. <laughs> Except if it really you're brightens in... your day when you can. Brightens your day. <laughs> Just not from Seattle. You can't see the sun. No, you don't see the sun you from don't Seattle. See the sun from... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that got my funny bone. Nice one. All right. Well, on that note, that was good. Um, Nathan Bennett at the Chinese revolutions.com. And then um, that's where everyone can find you and indulge in your podcasts. Yes. I'm still building the 
Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram stuff. Um, so that all exists. All the links, I believe, are on the website. Um, but yes, ChineseRevolutions.com is the home of the action. <laughs> Michael Cohen says, I was going to say, isn't the New Jersey dump visible to, from, you know, <laughs> from space? It was. It really was. It was from the moon. <clears throat> That's when they turned it into a park. They were like, holy God, we can see this from the space station. What a dump. That's New Jersey for you. Yes, it is. <laughs> what a dump. Uh, the only place you can turn a dump into a theme park. Well, I don't know about the only place, but it's a good place to do it. <laughs> and nothing changed. You still get all the crime and poverty and rats. Uh, what a joke. Well, uh, thank you, my friend. We will uh, we'll see you on the Insta Twitter grams <laughs> at some point. All right, thanks. Get them thank set you up. very much for having me on. Again, everyone, Nathan Bennett at ChineseRevolutions.com. Historical um, musings and, some yeah, throw in some cool travel stories because I really want to hear about all those cool places that I'm never going to get to see. All right. All right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Good job, Trevor. And we're out. All right. Uh, yeah, Nathan Bennett, everybody. Uh, be sure to check out the podcast. <laughs> I don't laugh that hard in a minute. That was fucking fun. Chinese revolutions. Uh, <laughs> and the way he delivered it. Yeah. <laughs> you, say you can see the moon from the, moon. the Great Wall. I was like, yes. Uh, I love, I love satire comedy. It's my favorite. <laughs> Speaking of comedy, well, let's we've, jump uh, into the news. Got some news, so So the army, we didn't, we didn't really talk about the, uh, the changes they made a while back that were amazing to their physical fitness test. Um, they they uh, they came up with something I couldn't believe it. It it was so based that I was just like I couldn't believe I was hearing it. They're like, there's gonna be a deadlift. I'm like, holy shit. And then they're like, there's gonna be a like weight toss. I'm like, holy shit. And then they're like, and a sled drag. I'm like, oh my god. And they were like, age and sex doesn't come into the standards. I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> like just in my pants. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, it's just about being able to do the things. And they were yep. like, yeah. And now <laughs> they they've reneged. decided. They reneged on all of that. No, no. <sighs> sex, and they're being very careful with this. Sex and age. Because what they don't want is dudes like me coming in and going, I'm a lady. <laughs> <laughs> no, I identify as a lady. <laughs> like that's cool. Guess what? But for this test, yeah. that doesn't matter. <clears throat> so they are easing the standards again, as they used to do back back when I was in. Uh, the standards were different for women and for old fucks. Uh, you know they, why? What? Which? They're gonna install the draft. They might, <laughs> they might. We we have something on that I too. But um, so those old guys are be like, "All right, can you run?" Like, no, at all. I can't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you thinking like a mile, like five miles? Can you run <laughs> at all? So yeah, I guess this was three years ago when they first made the change to the uh, the PT test that includes the deadlifting and other awesome things um, that also did not take into account gender or age. Well, they're saying gender in this story, so I'm they curious. Are. They are because this <clears throat> news station fucked up and they're not using But I'm, I'm pretty sure that the Army would word it as sex because I can't imagine that they would be... They would leave themselves open to any sort of interpretation. Yeah. No. No. And, and they're going to mean biological sex. Yes. <laughs> 
unlike the NCAA. Right. Uh, <laughs> so or the swimming competitions. That's for him, yeah. So, um, it's the only hill we die on, folks. It's like we took a step forward, and now they're like, "All right, two steps back." Just kidding. Just kidding. I just don't get it. I don't get. No, there's something coming down the pike that I think we don't know. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Do you ever see uh, Starship Troopers? Absolutely. Yeah, that was a satire. That was not a. That was a. You know, join the army and Stalinistic era. You know, let's go beat the bad guys. Kind right. of propaganda. Um, did I say Stalinistic? A little bit of that, but McCarthyism as well. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Yeah. So maybe that's coming down the pipe. I don't know. We'll see. Well, all right. Spinning on. Speaking of uh, the draft. The draft. So I wanted. I sent this to you. I've got a lot. I've got some more information on this than than what I initially sent to you. So. I saw this tweet <laughs> in the event of our draft from selective service yeah, from the selective service in the event of a draft, our agency would partner with FEMA to provide opportunities to conscientious objectors to make sure you can still be drafted. That's <laughs> basically, basically what it says. Like really? I have never heard of that. Now I have immediately was like, what the heck is coming that they're promoting this? And I'm going to scroll down a little bit because somebody brings that up like, Hey, What's the deal? And then this lady, correctly so, is like, this is what the Selective Service Twitter account always tweets about. And posts this and I think a couple other tweets in this thread that are a few years old. Because, yeah, what would they tweet about? Selective Service. <laughs> the Selective Service. Now, why this one is getting kind of traction where it's being picked up on the radar of more people, I don't know. Um something in the algorithm i guess sure. um which made me curious because they're talking about fema here and i here i'm gonna so conscientious objector that's a term that i don't know if everybody's familiar with but that's where you have some kind of moral objection to the idea of going to war um i've been in the military with people like this it was very it was very strange and I didn't understand why they were allowed to serve in the military. I, my personal, once you go, I don't think we should go to war ever. It should be like, okay, well, thank you. But you're like against the whole thing that we've the got going on here. <laughs> should have joined in the first place. Yeah. Now, um, I think the reason that those people are in is there are allowances for, <clears throat> okay, I've been in the army for five years. Allah came to me or whatever, and now I'm against going to war. No, it's a religious uh, thing, right? Okay. <clears throat> but it it fucks up the mojo because you'll be – I've experienced this. You're training as a team to fight as a team, and then they're like, you guys are going to deploy, and one guy goes, not me. <laughs> You're like, why? It's like, I'm a conscientious objector. It's like, wait, what? And he literally – he already had all the stuff – and this is what boggled my mind, but they still had him like training with us as if he was going to be a part of this thing. And then when the thing finally happened, yeah. he was like, all right, guys, good luck. <laughs> and we had to insert someone else into his spot. <clears throat> and I was like, what the fuck? So it's a cold piece. Um, however, uh, this, this is a little different. So, that's what a conscientious objector is, and I guess even if you're a conscientious objector, I didn't know this, you still have to sign up for the draft. Well, I knew that part, but in the event of a draft, you can apply to do other things. You can say, hey, wait a minute, conscientious objector, and they'll go, okay, cool, FEMA or maybe the Peace Corps or you're still going to be a some part of other the, you're going to be part of the relief effort entity or the, yeah the restoration part of yeah. it or whatever <clears throat> you still got to go yes so uh service is a conscientious objector that's where i want to get to two types of service are available to conscientious objectors and the type assigned is determined by your specific beliefs a person who is opposed to any form of military service will be assigned to an alternate service like we just talked about fema 
whatever, doing stuff for conservation, caring for uh, the sick or very young or very old, some kind of education stuff, healthcare. <clears throat> um, and then, oh, I guess these were the people that we had. The person whose beliefs allow serving in the military, but do not allow going to combat, which is still kind of bizarre. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so those people can serve in the armed forces, but will not be assigned training or duties that include using weapons. So not the commissary, because that's <laughs> deadly. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know I, the army marches on its stomach. <clears throat> That's that is because they were too sick to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> uh, some days I got them. Uh, and then it points out down here the length of service is the same time that you would serve. Now, look at the language here: the same amount of time a man, because who can get drafted? Man, oh men. God. Which now that I know about this, I'm like, wait a minute. Why is there any discussion about women being able to be drafted? Yep. If they can be drafted into this, yeah. Like the whole argument is, oh, you don't want to send your daughters into combat? Cool. Send sign them up. Sign them up, sign up for, for to be a FEMA nurse. Just <laughs> Let them all do the alternative service. There it is. So that's just my. Uh, Punchline didn't hit quite as hard as it did in my head. <laughs> like, yeah, and there you go. Oh, <laughs> got, him. got him, Trevor. What do we got next? Uh, let me see. That's here we go. We kind of talked about this oh, already. Yeah, he so, kind of hit on it. So um, Russia's demanding uh, countries that are sanctioning them to use rubles instead of dollars for natural gas. Yeah. Well. That's kind of the end of the story. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that is what they're requiring. That's what they're requiring. Um. Oh, we should we should have gone over this with uh, Nathan there. Um, not that it's history, but it is from China. So check this out. This is fucking crazy. You may have seen some of this on the news. Well, it's um, calling back. It's only like two a.m. <laughs> over there in China. I don't think he. I don't think he's over there. But uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, Check this out. So that's a plane falling straight out of the sky. It happened in China. <laughs> this is kind of the aftermath. I wanted to see if it shows. Now they're going through the wreckage. So that was a that was a Boeing 737. I kind of want to play it again, just so you see, like it just plummets straight down. And that's what's notable and crazy it's usually not how planes crash no and look i've watched enough air disasters that i'm basically an ntsb investigator <laughs> yes you are you know exactly where that black box is so um from what i understand this could have happened from basically two things a pilot grabbing that yoke and going down uh -huh. or a fault on the elevator where it just goes bink and locks in place yeah, and, and they're down. Yeah. That's it. There's, there's nothing no else pulling. There's no moving. <clears throat> yeah. The there's yoke. no in between. And I guess on that particular thing, a known fault is there's like a cap and the way the elevator actuator works is there's like a rod that goes back and forth and it's supposed to stop at this cap. Well, if that cap gets knocked out or it punches through, it'll just keep going <laughs> And it can get stuck and not be able to come back. Shit. <laughs> Which would, again, do what you just saw there. So, yeah. Very sad. Uh, like 123 people on board. Uh, of course, all deceased. No one lived through that. And uh, I haven't heard any official... And knowing the Chinese, they might be kind of hold this kind of close to the chest, so to speak. Um whether it is um you know he, human on purpose slash error mechanical error <laughs> or mechanical failure They're not gonna so. tell us. well uh i guess we'll just have to wait and see um and i think that is it for the news yes we have some sports 
which we haven't had in a while, but I definitely wanted to talk about this. Um, we talked about it coming up with the uh, Colorado Springs wrestling folks last week, uh, Randy and uh, Harlow. Um, <clears throat> but this past weekend, there was a fight. Well, let me do the sports stinger and then we'll let's get into sports. And we're live. We are. Um, so last this past weekend, there was a fight between uh, <clears throat> two of the world's strongest men, <clears throat> uh, labeled as the heaviest bout in history because they're gigantic, uh, Eddie Hall and Half Thor Bjornsson. And uh, I've got kind of a the last couple minutes of kind of a highlight reel from that. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look here. Oh, that was what you said earlier. Turned right in front of him. Yeah, you've got to take a step back. We've got to switch. Short jab there from four. Again, there uh, just. Nearly oh. halfway through. Oh, Ooh, Eddie. Big, big punch he, there. From he's four. getting a little cocky. He's not keeping his guard up. Well, but you know, I did, I did uh, hear some rumors. That's setting him up with a jab, setting him up with a jab. I see, I don't know why he's thinking he can just have one hand. Yeah. Eddie's so cocky, he's literally like, I can have a hand tied by him. And that is not. out and just crush his skull yeah <laughs> uh. <clears throat> so yeah that uh holy crap those are some very large people <laughs> beating the shit out of each other how tall is the mountain six 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 eight something like that have you seen the new reacher yeah dude is that not badass or what yeah Six five. Oh, actually, I think he's no. I think he's closer to like six ten. Yeah, he's, he's nearly seven feet tall because he came from a. <clears throat> his background was actually playing basketball. <laughs> oh, he came from an oak tree. <laughs> he was he was on like the uh, the Icelandic Olympic basketball team. <laughs> his, his coach youth. in high school was like, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, um, bud, your center. Uh, <laughs> And then, oh, we got some we got some sports history here. His three sports. Uh, this happened on March twenty first, two thousand one. So pre nine eleven, just the good old days, so to speak. 
Uh, this is a pitch. You you probably have seen this. <laughs> this is a pitch heard around the world. Check this out. And go. Play, God damn it. It's playing. Yeah. There we go. And skadoosh. <laughs> Blew that bird a away. bird just happened to fly through as he makes the pitch. And, of course, now here it is in super slow-mo. There it goes. And Do- douche. It's like, what the fuck, bird? <laughs> All of the feathers. And, of course, the bird is now deceased. <laughs> there was one animal harmed in the making of this video. That is correct, yeah. Uh, and that was... Um, I think he got a ground rule. Randy double. Johnson. I think he got a ground rule double. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what the call is there. That's a, re- is just, that's a did mulligan. we just redo? That's just a, redo? Can we just redo this? It's a mulligan. I think that's what they do. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Um, and I think uh, next Brings we us, have yeah, wraps us up for sports history. Do we? Do you want to run some uh, ads and pay some bills Let's real pay quick? Some bills. And, and then, then we'll, we'll do uh, history and get out of here. Take a look back in time. All right. Over here, my brakes made an awful noise. And the last time I got them done, it was so expensive. You should go to EXO Auto Works. They did a great job on mine, and it was way cheaper than anywhere else I've been. That sounds great. I need to get their number from you. At EXO Auto Works, we offer the best price on brake service in town. We include brand new brake pads, rotors, and hardware, which saves you money and gets you on the road faster. See our website for a full list of our services. Call EXO Auto Works today. Stop destroying your beard. Let me explain. A little while back, I thought I was properly taking care of my beard. Turns out, I was destroying it. Dry, brittle, hair falling out. My girlfriend hated it. He was worse than a dog without the cute puppy breath. So then, she ordered the beard struggle. Game changer natural ingredients awesome packaging and it smells phenomenal you smell sexy thank you oils balms they have beard growth accelerators in addition to the new carbon x three-in-one heated beard brush straightener and volumizer along with washes and conditioners stop destroying your beard order the beard struggle i have something you can destroy Order online now at thebeardstruggle.com. Use the code TLANE15 for 15% off your order. McDonald's has been in Russia since 1990. After 32 years, they are closing all restaurants and returning to US and A. This made the Russians very sad. That was until our great president, Vladimir Putin, said that's fine, we seize property you leave behind. And he let Russians buy. That's when Uncle Vanya started. Uncle Vanya is new Russian restaurant that serves all your McDonald's favorites like the Big Vlad, the 10th Kilo, and Double 10th Kilo. And now Uncle Vanya burgers come with cabbage and beets because we can't get lettuce and tomato from US and day. So come on down. Ba 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 Uncle Vanya. <laughs> All right. I really hope they stay with us as a sponsor. I do too. They're, they're, That's a lot of fun. I love uh, I, I love radishes and beets on my burger. <laughs> Cabbage and beets. Golvania. Ba 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 ba. <laughs> they, 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 That's, that one's catchy. they replaced ba, the uh, ba, 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 ba. they replaced the what was the old one? Ba da ba ba ba. No, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah, they can't do that. So it's now it's a uh, ba 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 from the <laughs> yeah. some Russian march. Uh, Man, <clears throat> a quarter kilo. <laughs> what did he say? Tenth kilo. A tenth kilo. Yeah. <laughs> Roughly a quarter pound. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna order that next time we go to Crack Donald's. <laughs> uh, I have a quarter kilo of beef on the patty with cabbage and beets. <laughs> I'm in. All right. Well, this week huh. in 
Who's this handsome devil? His history. Uh, we've got uh, March 24th, 1958. Elvis Presley traded his guitar for a rifle and army greens. I didn't even realize that they were drafting in 1958, but apparently they were. I thought it was later on, a little later that he went, but. Was it Korea? I think Vietnam. Because we were we were getting into shit in Vietnam as early as fifty seven, but I didn't think it was that serious. <clears throat> I mean, they were just gearing up. I don't know. He never went anywhere near that stuff. He went to Germany. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but he could have gone to FEMA apparently. <laughs> um, let's see, March twenty fifth, uh, nineteen sixty nine. John Lennon and Yoko Ono stage a bed-in for peace in Amsterdam. And as you can see in the picture, with breaks to let the maid uh, make the bed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> with breaks. Yep. But stay in bed. Yeah, for peace. Because it will help peace. Uh, <laughs> let's see, March 26, 1989, the first free elections happened in uh the former ussr or i guess it was still the ussr it's just this guy they had elections and decided this guy was the dude um boris yeltsin <clears throat> was elected their president under their first uh everybody can vote type election <clears throat> it's an amazing language i only know two words in russian uncle and vanya <laughs> moose and squirrel <laughs> 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 uh, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. <laughs> I wonder if uh, oh, my old job they were run by a bunch of Russian dudes. Yeah. Well, one of the Colorado boys, he's giving him shit, and the Colorado boy goes, "This ain't Ukraine. I'll beat your ass right here in the middle of the parking lot." I was like, "Yay, that's awesome!" <laughs> I laughed very much. He's like, in Ukraine, we just disappear, you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's uh, see, March 28th. Sorry, March 27th. Yeah, 27th. Takeo Yoshikawa, I'm probably butchering that, arrives in Oahu, Japan, or oh, Jesus. Oahu, Hawaii, to begin spying for Japan on the U.S. fleet leading up to the Pearl Harbor attack. <clears throat> Apparently later on we were cool with him because there's a picture of him in Hawaii. I'm pretty sure that's pre-attack. <laughs> you think so? I bet you might. Yeah, maybe. That's um, the one he sent home. <laughs> March 28th, 1979. A major accident there it is. occurs at Pennsylvania's Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. <clears throat> this later on would be often compared to Chernobyl. Not even close. As a well, as an example of how safe nuclear <laughs> power can yeah. be when you're doing it right, even when something goes wrong, it's like, eh. Yeah. Um, Later on, immortalized and now used to um, um, harm, create mutants for the X Men. Of course, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. Um, I guess reports uh, from studies later, much later on. <clears throat> have determined that uh, people exposed basically got the equivalent of an x-ray or I should say between the equivalent of an x-ray and about a year's worth of background radiation. So nothing, like even the people that were severely exposed, it was nothing like crazy. Your, your organs didn't turn into liquid shit. Yeah, and they, and they haven't really determined like a crazy uptick in cancers or anything like that from from this so um let's see march 29th 1976 uh eight ohio national guardsmen are actually indicted for the shooting that occurred at kent state uh where four students were shot during an anti-war protest in 1970 <clears throat> um and yeah they were they were actually charged with a crime for shooting them which is uh surprising um, and finally, March 30th, 1981, President Reagan mm -hmm. is shot and wounded in Washington, D.C. by John Hinckley Jr., who now has a record label. 
because of course he does. <laughs> you should get him to put out the Beowulf record. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw I should have got the video. I've seen a video where he um is like, "Hey guys, cuz he's out now. He's not he he was committed to a mental institution and was let out, I don't know, a couple of years ago." Um but uh he's like, "Hey guys, I'm starting my own label. So send in your demo tapes." And I'm like, "Oh. <laughs> Here's the PO box number." And I'm like, does this, guy, does this guy know that the internet exists? <laughs> no. He, he may not. He may not. <clears throat> I guess he put I'm out... I'm pretty a, sure you shouldn't... I'm pretty sure you should not send him anything. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I'm pretty yeah. sure the Secret Service has a comb and you'll be, you will definitely end up on a watch list. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the week in his story. Thank you for watching and or listening while you're pooping uh, or while you're driving home from your shitty job. Thanks for checking out this shitty podcast. We really appreciate you. I'd like to thank our sponsors, EXO Auto Works and Harmonic Studios, Crafts by Carolyn Lane, and of course, The Beard Struggle. This week, or excuse me, April 9th, so that's a that's couple a, weeks. It's a couple weeks out, What we're going to start plugging it now. Uh, Facing Forward is going to be performing at the West Side Barrel House, 8 p.m., no cover, good food. Um, you can probably score some good drugs in the alley. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gotten back reputable to Reputable joint, It's huh? a reputable <clears throat> Hey, it was on Joe Kenda twice. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I plowed through that show one time. Yeah. I was like, hey, that's my bar. Yeah. <laughs> I know where that is. Yeah. It's fun to watch that show when you live here. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. super fun. You're like, I know where they're talking about. That's that one place. Um, and the other place now is now a 7-Eleven where a lot of Joe Kinda's happen. The Aaron Inn. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. 7-Eleven now. So it's gone. An institution history. Well, uh, check us out on the web. Uh, mantoolsmedia.com our social media is at links.co slash mantoolsmedia and once again like subscribe share rate and review we have uh, uh, a lot of traction to regain so <laughs> we really appreciate all of the likes and shares and comments um, you can go to rate this podcast.com slash man tools and uh, of course check out our guest at chinese revolutions.com yep uh listen to nathan's podcast uh get you some chinese history on the revolutions yeah i get it it's the revolutions mm -hmm. that's it that's awesome he's a funny guy yeah <laughs> see the moon <laughs> to the moon <laughs> hey yeah well that's Might have been to clip it. that's, that out for a highlight that's yeah, so definitely a highlight uh, <clears throat> so. thanks for joining us we'll see you next week Good night, everybody.